April 1945. After severe battles, British troops took control of the German Focke-Wulf factory. Heavily ruined, it still kept numerous Nazi secrets. In all this mess, the soldiers discovered an unusual aircraft. It resembled nothing they had seen before. It looked like a propeller-driven machine, but it did not have a propeller. The white wings were swept back. It featured two heavy machine guns mounted at the front, allowing it to be identified as a fighter. Yet it also possessed external weapon hardpoints beneath its wings and fuselage. A significant number of documents were lost in the fire. However, the remaining ones had shed light upon the mysterious aircraft. It turned to be the Focke Wolf TA-183, the German new generation fighter jet. It had small dimensions and was incredibly light. The jet engine could accelerate it to transonic speed, which combined with heavy armament was to give Luftwaffe total superiority. It was regarded as a game changer by the high military command. The initial flights were scheduled for May June 1945, but on April 8, British troops seized the factory. It could have been yet another unrealized project, but it was just the beginning. Within several months, the surviving documents, including drawings, technical information, and several unfinished airplanes, appeared in London, Washington, and even Moscow. In just a couple of years after the war, what seemed impossible would become a reality. The dogfighting accelerated to unprecedented speeds. The tiny machine was destined to change the look of the fighters for the decades to come. It contributed a lot in the appearance of the Cold War iconic fighters on both sides of the ocean. Today, its technical decisions might seem rather simple. However, it was their combination that turned to be critical for the development of a small and light multi-role fighter which would provide great maneuverability. The same principles would be applied in the American lightweight fighter program of the 1970s, leading to the development of the F-16 fighter jet. If you'd like to learn more about the development of this legendary fighter, a video is available on the channel. Nevertheless, all this would happen much later. Meanwhile, 1944 had just begun. The Reich Aviation Ministry was in desperate search of a new jet fighter design. The shock caused by the Messerschmitt M262 Schwalbe had vanished much quicker than it was planned. The Allied jet developments and a new generation of bombers were the reality they had to face. The German emergency fighter program started in June 1944. Its main goal was to create a proper replacement for the Messerschmitt MA-262 and Heinke HE-162 jet airplanes. The most daring projects were presented. Some were using swept wings, the others had tailless design, still others used both jet and rocket engines combined by drop fuel tanks, and so on and so forth. Yet the majority of concepts were rejected. The lack of time was critical. The winner would have only one year to build the airplane and start its flight tests. Unlike others, the focke wulf Flugzeugbau designers went the opposite way. Instead of creating a brand new concept, they started digging the archives. The chief constructor Kurt Tank decided to use the concept presented by Hans Maltop in 1942. It had incredible characteristics, but none of the existing jet engines was powerful enough back then. The 1944 version was named Design 2 at the focke -Wolf factory. There is no information if there was any Design 1 and how it actually looked like. The Heinke OHS-011 jet engine was chosen as a power plant. It was to speed up the airplane to about 1000 km per hour at 7000 m height. A distinctive feature of a new airplane was a huge front air intake, which passed under the cockpit and proceeded to the rear, where a jet engine was located. Another standout element of the T-183 was its swept wing configuration. It combined innovative swept wings and conventional T-tail, known as the Maltop T-tail. 
The airplane also featured a distinctive vertical stabilizer design that enhanced control at high speeds and during turns. Wings were swept back at 40 degrees. They were thin and mounted in the mid-fuselage position. The designers tried to keep their center of pressure as close to the center of fuselage as possible. The huge fin was swept back at 60 degrees, with the tail plane mounted on its top. The wing elements and the rudder provided control, while the tail plane surfaces were used solely for trimming. A single pilot sat in a pressurized cockpit with a bubble canopy, which provided excellent visibility. The TE-183 emphasized the use of lightweight materials and construction techniques, contributing to better speed and agility without sacrificing structural integrity. The term of aerodynamic efficiency was used for the first time in the context of the TE-183. Its streamlined fuselage and overall aerodynamic shape helped reduce drag, a characteristic that modern jets also strive for to achieve higher speeds and fuel efficiency. All the design principles were incredibly enhanced in stability and maneuverability during high speed. However, keeping airplanes lightweight was not an easy task. The engineers faced the shortage of strategic materials, aluminum in the first place. Maltop made a radical decision. The wooden ribs were used in the wind structure. They made it box-like so it contained six fuel cells, giving the aircraft a total fuel load of 1,565 liters. As the nature of war was changing rapidly by 1945, and due to the shortage of supplies, the unification seemed the only way out for the military aviation. It demanded for multi-role combat aircraft, which could perform various tasks from ground attack to air defense. This became the main design philosophy of the T-183. The primary armament of the aircraft consisted of four 30mm Mk-108 cannons arranged around the air intake. The aircraft also was to use the new Rukstal X-4 wire-guided missiles with two mounted under each wing. It also could carry a bomb load of 500 kilos, consisting of one SD or more SC-500 half-ton bombs, one bomb and torpedo BT-200 bomb, five SD-series fragmentation bombs, SC-series general-purpose bombs, or a RB-2030 reconnaissance camera. Such armament diversity anticipated the future multi-role use. In February 1945, the Focke-Wolf design won the competition. To note the outstanding merits of Kurt Tank, the letters TA were added to the full name of the aircraft. The Focke-Wolf TA-183 designed two-fighter received the name Hookabine from Wilhelm Busch's Hans Hookabine the Unlucky Raven a cartoon raven that traditionally caused troubles for the others. Meantime, Maltop's team seriously explored the modifications for the Design 2. The second version, or the Design 3, had a redesigned tail unit using a short horizontal to mount the control surfaces just above the line of the rear fuselage. Its wings and cockpit were moved rearward, the wind sweep back was reduced to 32 degrees. This airplane looked considerably more conventional to the modern eye. Its outlines can be seen in the majority of the 1950s fighters. A total of 16 prototypes were to be built, allowing the tail unit to be interchanged between the design 2 and 3. Since its power plant Heinkel HAS-011 turbojet was still under development, the designers used the weaker Juma-004 instead. Nevertheless, as if justifying the name Hookabine, the plane turned unlucky. As we already know, the factory was occupied by the British troops who discovered a few wind tunnel models of the fighter. The photos of the TA-183-like airplane, with the red stars on its sides, appeared in the Western press at the beginning of the 1950s. But how did the Soviets got their copies, since they never occupied Focke-Wulf facilities? The Allied leaders were not fooled by the Soviet propaganda. No one was willing to share secret samples of weapons which could be used against them. 
It was completely clear that the tension will begin as soon as the war is over. However, the Reich Ministry of Aviation kept all the necessary information. After Berlin was captured in spring 1945, the Soviet Special Forces discovered the complete set of the T-183 blueprints along with test data for aircraft's win. In 1951, the Aviation Age magazine published a striking image of a Soviet fighter resembling the Focke Wolf T-183. According to the caption, it was Russia's latest interceptor fighter designated MiG-19. The airplane had a large tail fin equal in length to the fuselage and two fences on each wing panel. The dark paint, red stars outlined in white, the number 125 on the nose, and the radical aerodynamic design created a credible impression for the public. Despite this, the experts were not fooled. They concluded that an aircraft with these features would be ineffective as a weapons platform due to excessive instability. The photo turned to be fake. Yet it kept appearing in some other magazines a few years afterwards. By the end of 1945, not only the US, but also the USSR had very detailed information about the T-183. Two years later, at a few weeks' intervals, with the utmost secrecy, both countries presented their jet fighters, the MiG-15 and the F-86 Sabre, which had similar outlines to each other, and the T-183. The Americans started their jet developments in 1943. Two main models of the time, the F-80 Shooting Star and McDonald F-H-1 Phantom, had outlines similar to the Messerschmitt Me-262 Schwalbe. However, after 1946, airframe design made a sharp turn. Front air intake that passed through the fuselage, jet engine inside, straight wings were replaced with swept ones, but the tail section was less conventional. The fuselage became shorter. A good example can be Republic F-84 Thunderjet with straight wings designed by Alexander Cartrelli in 1946. It has front air intake and the engine in the middle section of the fuselage. Its later variant, the F-84 F Thunderstreak, received swept wings and shorter fuselage. The F-86 Sabre was the first jet fighter which was adopted by the United States Air Force. The FJ-1 Fury design was used to create the first F-86 prototype, which was initially planned as a straight wind jet. Front air intake, swept wings, jet engine, bubble canopy, simple and reliable design together with high speed and maneuverability made these new machines incredibly numerous. The number of the F-86 exceeded 9,800 items. Moreover, their service life was very long. The last F-86 was retired in 1994 from the Bolivian Air Force. There is one more airplane worth mentioning in the context of the T-183. It was developed by its creator in the late 1940s when Kurt Tank settled in Argentina. Four airplanes named IAE-33 Pulki II or the Aero II were built by the Fabrica Militar de Aviones. Its first flight occurred in 1950, three years later than the MiG-15 and the F-86 Sabre appeared, but its outlines are very similar. However, the airplane could be influenced by these new jets, not the T-183. Lots of stuff concerning the T-183 is arguable. The most arguable aspect is its impact on the MiG-15. Since 1941, the Soviets made several unsuccessful attempts to create an airplane with liquid rocket propellant engine. Although the very first detailed jet engine design, which was totally Soviet, was drawn in 1937, its production version would appear only 10 years later. The first mentioning of the Soviet jet fighters can be dated to 1946. On April 24, 1946, two Soviet jet fighters made their first flights. 
Those were MiG-9 and Yak-15. According to the aviation historian Bill Gunston, the representatives from the Mikoyan Gurevich and Yakovlev design bureaus tossed a coin to determine which aircraft would be the first Soviet jet to fly. MiG-1 Its first flight lasted for six minutes and officially made it the first Soviet jet fighter. Both machines had straight wings and similar outlines. The Yak-15 was a redesigned version of the Yak-3 piston fighter using Chankar's Juno 004 jet engine. The MiG-9 was influenced by the Messerschmitt Mi-262. It was equipped with two BMW 003 jet engines located inside its fuselage. During 1945, the Soviet government kept sending lots of new directives to the Mikoyan Gurevich and other fighters' design bureaus to speed up their work in the field of jet fighters' development. Despite this great pressure, the work moved too slow. The State Defense Committee's directive of the 20th of July 1945, titled On Studying and Mastering the Production of German Jet Aircraft Designs, demanded that the aircraft industry use two types of German jet engines, the Junkers Jumo 004B and the BMW 003 in particular. Copying of the Messerschmitt Mi-262 as a whole, or at least its basic elements, was seriously considered both by the authorities and designers. In May 1945, the MiG Bureau engineers started the I-260 twin-engine fighter project. The engines were mounted under the wings, same as in the Mi-262. The result was satisfying, but they wanted to reduce drag and achieve the full potential of the engine. To achieve this, they decided to place the power plant in the forward part of the fuselage, with the engines exhausting under its rear part. In June 1945, this concept was realized in the I-300 project. Later, this jet fighter would be known as the MiG-9. Detailed design history of the MiG-15 was published by the Russian historian Yefim Gordon, refuting any connection between the TA-183 and the MiG-15. According to the designers, the MiG-15 was an indigenous design. They chose swept wings to be ahead of most Western designs. In 1945, swept wings were first tested on the Soviet-designed aircraft, the MiG-8 Utka. On the contrary, Western historians, including David Myra, have claimed the Soviet MiG-15 was at least inspired by the TA-183, because the Soviets captured plans from the Germans at the end of the World War II. The MiG-15 does bear resemblance in the layout, sharing high tailplane and nose-mounted intake, although the aircraft are different in structure, details and proportions. It's often noted that the F-86 Sabre and the MiG-15 have similar outlines. What is also noteworthy is that during the Korean War, it was the F-86 Sabre which was able to withstand the MiG-15, which got the nickname Korean Surprise for a reason. The Fokker Wolf TA-183 was the one to make a sharp turn in the jet fighter's design. Observing the post-war jet fighters, it's hard to deny its significant impact. But we can always be skeptical, 